Welcome to the Servants of Grace podcast hosted by Dave Jenkins. Our podcast exists to provide trustworthy expository messages through the Bible and faithful answers to your theology questions. Now for today's episode, let's join our host, Dave Jenkins. Well, welcome back to the Servants of Grace podcast. My name is Dave and I'm the host for this show. And on today's episode, a listener writes in and they have a great question. And the question is, how do I move from being a hearer to a doer of the word of God? Well, James warns the believer that for believers, it is indeed impossible to deceive themselves in James 1, 22 through 24, when he says this, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. You see, we deceive ourselves when we only hear God's word but fail to put it into practice. James likens us to a man observing his face in the mirror and walking away without lifting a finger. Perhaps this man, while looking in the mirror, spots some breadcrumbs on his beard. Nonetheless, he wouldn't be bothered to attend to those breadcrumbs or to remove them from his face. He walks away as if he's seen nothing. Likewise, a person who hears the word and does not take action is shooting themselves in the foot, sabotaging their progress in the grace of God. Our faith without deeds is useless. In fact, James further taught that when Abraham offered Isaac on the altar, his faith was working together with his actions because a man is justified by works and not by faith only in James 2, 20 through 24. And so Abraham's faith was made complete by what he did. It is not the hearer who is justified and blessed, but the doer. But how do you move from being a hearer only to a doer of the word of God? That's what we're going to talk about today. First, looking at look into God's word intently. James 1.25 says this, the believer who puts the word of God into practice is the one who looks intently into the perfect law and continues in it. This believer does not receive the word of God casually. They go the extra mile to scrutinize and internalize every word and instruction received. Let's take Joshua as an example. With the high mandate of leading the Israelites into the promised land, the Lord God commanded Joshua to meditate upon the book of the law day and night. Only then would Joshua be in a position to do what was written in it, according to Joshua 1.8. We also see Paul teaching Timothy to give heed to reading, exhortation, and doctrine. And in this, Paul charges him to meditate on the scriptures and instructions and give himself entirely to them so that his progress may be evident to all in 1 Timothy 4, 13-15. And so for Timothy's actions to align with the teaching he had received, he had to make them the object of his focus. He had to allow the teachings to simmer in his heart and in his mind. Now in the parable of the sower, Jesus taught that he who received the seed on the good ground and went ahead to bear fruit was the one who heard the word and understood it in Matthew 13, 23. Now, believers are not to receive the word of God with a flippant attitude. We need to look intently into the word of God to meditate on the word of God and to saturate our heart and our mind in the word. Only then can we understand the word and bear fruit. Secondly, let's look at treasuring the word of God. Job 23, 12 says, I have not departed from the commandments of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. In Job chapter 1, we see God testifying about Job's character. He was blameless. He was upright. He feared God. He shunned evil. Job was not merely a hearer of God's word, but a doer of the word. And so in the scripture above, in Job 23, 12, Job confesses to having treasured God's word more than his necessary food. This helped him cling to God's word and do what the word of God stipulated. Now, we also find David declaring that the decrees of the Lord were more precious to him than much pure gold in Psalm 19, 9 through 10. He too dearly treasured the word of God. And so when we view God's word as a great treasure, we will not receive it casually. We will receive it with great joy and seek to do what it says. And so Jesus taught that the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid, overjoyed about the treasure 
he then went and sold all that he had and bought the field in Matthew 13, 44. May you and I receive God's word as a treasure and do what it says. Third, be a wise builder. Matthew 7, 24 through 25 says this. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Now, there are two extremes where responding to the word of God is concerned. We can either respond as a wise or a foolish man or woman. The foolish man receives the word of God, but does not do what it says. As a result, like his house, which is built on sand, it stands no chance. Every day we are building our lives, our careers, our marriages, and on and on by how we respond to the word of God. We can either be wise or we can be foolish builders. Now, Paul referred to himself as a wise master builder and warned the Corinthians to take heed to how they built on the foundation that he had laid in 1 Corinthians 3.10. He desired that they would carry on building wisely. Point four, do the will of the Father. Matthew 7, 21 through 23 says this, Not Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now, the high of believers deceiving themselves will be on display on the day of judgment. Jesus warned that many who prophesied and cast out demons in his name would be denied entry into his kingdom. This is because they did not do the will of the Father. They would get the shock of their lives on judgment day, having deceived themselves while on earth. The ticket to heaven is not the wondrous works we perform, but whether we did the will of God. And so little wonder that Jesus taught that whoever does the will of his father in heaven is his brother, his sister, and his mother in Matthew 12, 50. It is those who do the will of God that shall reign with him in eternity. Now, our fifth point, receive God's word with meekness. James 1, 21 says this, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary describes meekness as a quality of being humble, mild, moderate, and submissive. Our attitude as we receive God's word, it plays a huge role in how we respond to the word of God. In fact, James implores the church to receive God's God's word with meekness in order to tap into its ability to save our souls. God's word is potent and full of life. It has the ability to overhaul our lives and bring life, healing, and restoration. In fact, the word of God reminds us that although God is a creator of the universe, he seeks those of a poor and contrite spirit, those who tremble at his word in Isaiah 66 2. God knows that it is those who tremble at his word that do his bidding. Our knowledge of the word of God is not enough. We need to take the next step and actually do what the word of God says. Only then will we be blessed as John 13, 17 says. We need to move from being hearers to doers of the word of God. And since the book of James was written to teach its audience how authentic faith displays itself in the face of trials. We ought not to be surprised to find James mentioning the importance of obedience again and again. James 121 mentions obedience explicitly, helping to demonstrate that true reception of the implanted word. It means that we obey the word of God. We read in James 122 that we are to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And so when we look at the word of God, we must look at it with an eye, putting the word into practice in our lives. Listening to the word and knowing what it says is not enough if our lives are not changed as a result. For if we only hear the word of God and never put it into practice, we have deceived ourselves. This is not to say that our obedience to the word of God earns salvation for us. Only God's sovereign act of election and even regeneration by which he grants us a new birth, it results in our salvation. The evidence of our new birth is our possession of faith, which is evidenced by our profession and our good works. Faith is not effectual if it does not produce obedience. This obedience, it flows from true faith faith, but does not earn our justification. Rather, obedience to the word of God demonstrates that the faith we claim to have is true and saving faith. That's the point that James is making in James 1, through 25. 
In fact, in James 1, 23 through 25, James draws a contrast between the doers of the word and those who hear it only. The hearers are like those who look in a mirror and then forget what they have just seen in verses 23 through 24 of James 1. But the doer is blessed because he looks into the law and does not forget, but acts on it in James 1, 25. The contrast here between the hearer and the doer is that the doer remembers the law of liberty. Only those who look at the word and submit to it will be blessed. Those who take only a passing glance at the word of God and are unconcerned with how the word uh, and what it must do and does in our lives must inform their actions are like those who look into a mirror and then go away, not embracing the opportunity to act upon what they have seen. Now, the law of liberty in James 1.25 refers to the whole of the word of God, more specifically the old covenant laws and the promises and their fulfillment in Jesus Christ. How do you look at the law today, dear listener? Do you go to the word of God with an eye and a view for how it may change your life? If not, you are in danger of being a hero only. Well, I want to encourage you as we wrap up this episode to look at your life today and begin to take steps to obey the word of God in those places where you have not Uh, been obedient. Well, I want to thank you for listening or watching today's episode of the Servants of Grace podcast. Until next time, may God bless you and keep you. Thank you for listening to the Servants of Grace podcast today. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe leave a rating on the app, and share our episode with your friends and family. If you'd like to, you can follow us on Instagram at Servants of Grace, on Twitter at Servants of Grace, or by searching Servants of Grace on Facebook. You can also find this podcast on the front page of our website at servantsofgrace.org.